What's up, y'all? <clears throat> A little quick breakdown here on this Dubai World Cup 2019 here. A uh, $12 million purse. Let's get into it. Uh, number one, Gunavera's back at another run at a big race. Um, got a new jockey, though. Um, Emisiel Jeremio. Don't know too much about him. He's never ridden this horse before, though. Gunavera is out of uh, dialed in, it's out of mine shaft and bridles. He's got a uh, decent breeding to go this distance. Um, last outing was in the Pegasus World Cup. Uh, ran six in that race. Not too impressive of a show there against uh, City of Light. Uh, Gunavera is at 12 to 1 right now. Now, the number two, uh, Capizano. Uh, Capizano is looking pretty good. Has a Macau uh, Barcelona. A Macau Barcelona. Uh, he's won on this horse. He won the last two outings on this horse. Um, got a win in the uh, Al Moctum um, round of three and in the Mina Rashid. And you have to pardon me, I've never heard of some of these races before. Um, but I'm gonna break it down anyway. Uh, time was slow in that Al Moctum. It was a uh, 2.05 for the mile and a quarter, but uh, a lot of the horses ran that race were running in it again. It's a little difficult to handicap some of these foreign races because they don't give you the fractions that the American races give you, which allows you to give a more accurate, accurate picture of uh, how the race actually developed. But at any rate, um, I'm guessing that that race had a pretty slow pace. Um, at any rate, uh, he came up with the win. Uh, he did have a decent time uh, at uh, minute 36 in the mile in the uh, Mina Rashid. And uh, he also had a win before that in the uh, Azizi Aliyah. Uh, so he's going uh, off three wins in a row. He's the second favorite now at five to, or at uh, seven to two. Uh, third is a favorite, North America out of Great Britain, go figure. Uh, Richard Mullins uh, riding him. He has won a bo uh, board this horse before. A lot of people like this horse. He won the uh, Al Moctum round one and round two um, at a mile and a mile and three sixteenths. He did skip the round three, so he didn't get to face Capistano there. Um, he did run uh, last year's Dubai World Cup. Uh, that was the last race he uh, ran uh, for a long time before he ran that Al Moctum uh, uh, one. Uh, he lost that by uh, 51 lengths to um, last year's champion Thunder Snow, who's running again uh, today. So he had a terrible outing in that race, and um, I think they're going <clears> to, <throat> they've got him back in good shape. He's got two, two wins, and a lot of people like him to win it. We'll see, though, which is not the clear cut favorite. Now, number four. Number four, um, Audible. Audible's back at it again at 12 to 1. Flavian Pratt's aboard him. Uh, he hasn't won aboard this horse before, but he has ridden him. Uh, his last outing uh, in the Pegasus World Cup, once again, fifth by 12 lanes off of City of Light. Uh, so not too great of an outing there. We're stretching out to a mile and a quarter, which he, he would probably, a lot of people think, would do a little bit better. Uh, he's probably going to be stalking this pace, so he should be in a pretty decent position as long as the pace is pretty honest. But we don't know if he's really going to have enough horse to get him home at a mile and a quarter for a win. So we'll see. He should have a decent positioning, uh, and um, we'll see if he can get that done, get get it in there. Um, number five, Seeking the Soul. Seeking the Soul's got Mike Smith riding him, aboard Hall of Famer Mike Smith. Never ridden him before. He's at 7-1, to one, though. Um, his last outing in the Pegasus, uh, second in that race uh, behind um, City of Light. So he had a decent outing. Um, that was in the slop. Before that, he ran um, in the Clark. He was third in the Clark, handicap at Churchill. Um, so I expect this horse to kind of be a contender. Um, he had a workout of a minute breezing, uh, pretty respectable there. He seems to be in good shape. And this could be the race where he makes his uh, big run and breaks free, especially, uh, you know, given the fact he's got Mike Smith aboard. Um, next, we've got Pavel. Uh, Pavel back at it again here. Um, Joel Rosario riding him. Hasn't ridden him before. <clears throat> he's at 20 to 1, though. So, I mean, that kind of makes him attractive with Rosario 20 to 1. Um, uh, last outing, um, Descend Pascal at a mile and an eighth. He was fourth in that, 10 lengths off the leader. It wasn't that impressive of a race. Um, 
or as, uh, for him, uh, he got kind of blown away, but uh, that race had a, a pretty quick time. I think it was a uh, minute 46. Um, so he has been challenged. He's going to be in decent shape, I think. Uh, the workouts weren't too impressive, in my opinion. Uh, but I do expect the fact that he's got Rosario aboard that um, he's going to get a good position and he will have a chance to come through in this one. Um, number seven returning is Gronkowski. Uh, Gronkowski's back at 20 to 1. Um, he's got Murphy aboard him. He's never ridden him before. His last outing was the uh, all, uh, what is it, the all, uh, all Maktoum um, 3. Uh, he was fifth there. Uh, so. Um, you know, he went out and went the mile and a quarter. I uh, was beaten by Capizano as well as a couple of other runners in this one. So, I mean, Gronkowski's back out there. I really just don't think Gronkowski's got what it takes to get it done at this distance. Um, I think he's probably better suited to running shorter distances. He likes to come off the pace, so if the pace is really fast, it's going to favor Gronkowski. But uh, we'll see what kind of ride he gets out there. Um, and he is a strong horse. I mean, he, he is strong, so uh, that could uh, come in, in uh, his favor tomorrow. Now, number eight, we have Axelrod. Um, Axelrod's at 20 to 1. Royston F. French, or for French, or I, I don't really, I didn't look up how to pronounce that, but it's a strange last name with two F's in a row. But uh, he, he's riding um, aboard Axelrod, like I said, 20 to 1. Last outing was a, a uh, mile. Um, he put, did that uh, 10 lengths off the leader. Miles run a, a, um, a minute 34. So he was way out of that one. Uh, before that, he did seven furlongs. Um, you know, fourth in that race. And then uh, before that was the Breeders' Cup Classic where he was ninth. So needless to say, that's why he's 20 to one. Um, at any rate, uh, He's in there. We'll see what he's got. Number nine, New Trails. Is that him? Yeah, New Trails. Out of Medallia d'Oro. Uh, he's a Broodmere Sires, Mr. Prospector. So he has some decent breeding coming into this one. He's at 30 to 1 right now. Um, he's ridden by uh, Connor Beasley. Don't know much about him, but he has won aboard this horse before. Now, at a mile and quarter, he also uh, ran the uh, all uh, uh three. He was fourth behind uh, Capizano in that one. Uh, 11 lengths off the lead. Before that, he ran in the two. He did run second in that race behind uh, North America. So he's back at it again in Dubai. Um, knows the track well. Has shown that he can run well in these races. Um, I expect him to be running near the front, so we'll see what uh, what what he he brings to the table on this one. Um, he's going to be worth watching, especially if his price if the price is right. You know what I mean? Um, next, uh, we're going to move on to my notes are a little scrambled here. There we go. Uh, number ten, uh, we got Yoshida. Now, uh, Yoshida has got Jose Ortiz aboard. He's at 8-1 right now. Ortiz, you know, you always got to respect him. Uh, Yoshida, I think he's going to be in pretty good shape for this race. Um, 49 breezing, not that great of a workout time, but uh, he did run the Woodward. He got a win there. Um, decent time there. He um, was fourth in the Breeders' Cup Classic, but uh, only a length off the leader. Um, so, uh, decent outing there for him as well. And um, then he decided to go for the Pegasus turf instead of going to the dirt. Don't really know why. I mean, he ran turf before, so I guess I thought they'd switch him back. Didn't work out. He was sixth in that one. So they're going back to the dirt again with Yoshida. So I'd, I'd keep an eye on him. Um, eight to one might be a little bit low. I think that might go up a little bit because he hasn't shown too much. And I don't think Ortiz's name will carry that much weight in his buy. So that, those uh, numbers might go up in the odds there. Uh, number 11, uh, KT, KT Bravo? KT Brave. Um, yes, out of Japan as well. Jael Moreira. <sighs> Joel Moreri. I practiced that too, and it's, yeah, it's a tough one. He's never ridden this horse before. Horse is 30 to 1. He had a race 
at a longer distance of a uh, mile and five sixteenths. Uh, he was second by two lengths in that. So, I mean, hey, he's definitely got the distance, even though that race was incredibly slow. They made it a, a mile and five sixteenths in 215. But uh, he, he has, does have uh, experience going the distance. Um, before that, he did a, uh, a mile and a quarter in a grade one stakes uh, race in Japan. He was third, two lengths off in that one. Did another mile and eighth, uh, uh, 11th. So he, he's a little starving for a win here. But he's got experience at the distance. So, I mean, if this turns into a um, speed duel early and the front runners fall apart, um, he's, he's probably definitely going to be in there. Aside from that, I don't know. He's probably going to go up in those odds. So 30 to 1 is probably uh, too low. He's probably going to go above 50 or so. Uh, next, we've got Thunder Snow. Thunder Snow, last year's winner, 6 to 1. Christophe Similian's riding him. Um, his last outing was in the, uh, yeah, I got to say the name again. The Al Maktum. Al Maktum. We'll call it the Al Maktum. However you pronounce that. Yes. But yes, he. Um, Racing that when he was uh, second, running behind uh, Capizano. Uh, so Capizano has beaten him. He was nine lengths off, so it wasn't close in that race. Time was really slow in that one, so, you know, slow pace. I don't expect the pace to be that slow in this one, but uh, we'll see. I expect him to kind of turn it up a little bit up front. But Thunder Snow, he's going to be game. I don't really know if he's going to have what it takes to win it. I think to win it, he's going to have to go crazy and go out there and just kind of steal this one. But uh, he's familiar with the track. He's got the victory here. He's got a good workout coming out of uh, 47 breezing and four furlongs. So you got to keep your eye on Thunder Snow at 6 to 1. Um, and uh, number 13, we have uh, Dal Kong. Um, he's out of a Fleet Alex, one of my favorite horses of all time. So, I mean, uh, Fleet Alex was strong. He could go the mile and a half. I mean, got to love a Fleet Alex. Uh, this horse is 30 to 1. Uh, Oliver uh, Dol. Dolize, 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 go with that. Oliver Dolize is riding him, and uh, he was in the El Mactum again, uh, ran third behind Capizano, so knows the track, uh, he's got experience with these other horses, so you can see why he's in there, don't really know if he's going to win, I think it's possible he could hit the board, I mean he hit the board in the El Mactum. it's possible he could hit the board uh, today. So we're going to have um, a pace handicap, and I'm going to do here and then come back with a winner. 